<laughs> Welcome to Beer Buzz. I'm Liz. I'm Chris. And today we're drinking with the legendary John Harris from Ecliptic Brewing. <laughs> Tell us about what the craft brewing scene was like in Oregon in the 1980s. That's when you first got on the scene, right? Yeah, I started brewing uh, with the Minimum Group in 1986. Um, prior to that, you know, this whole thing had started. I you know, was in college and this Red Hook beer showed up and just like, it tasted like blueberries, you know? <laughs> and, and at one point, Michael Jackson, the late great beer writer, is like, this has a Belgian character. So now before I know that, it's a Belgian style beer. It was like, it was like ESB, called Red Hook ESB. But anyhow, um, so I kind of like got in. This guy gave me a Dortmunder action beer, a dab German beer at one point, and a guy was ordering me. And um, I'm like, wow, this beer has some flavor. What is this thing about other beers? So I started like going, getting into imports, and then uh, then the craft beer, like what we called micro brews back then. Right. Um, started coming on the scene. So we had you know, Pyramid out of Kalama, Washington, and we had Widmer and um, Bridgeport, and uh, those were like the first three plus the, um, at a, you know, Washington State you had. Well, Pyramid was from Washington, but um, Burt Grants out of Yakima and um, Red Hook out of Seattle. So those were kind of the first five, six breweries you started seeing around the bars in Portland. So was your first real brewing job then with McMinimins? Yeah, so I... Uh, Did you almost get fired on the first day? <laughs> Who told you that? No. <laughs> Everybody's no, got a great yeah, start. So, so yeah, so I applied to McMinimins. It was an ad in the Willamette Week. said Brewer Wanted, and I had a housemate, and she's like, that's your job. You love beer. I'm like, ah, I'm, not, I'm not a brewer. How are they going to hire me? <laughs> So I roll in, and the guy's like, I go, I'm here to meet Conrad. And like, I didn't know it was the same Conrad who I'd met, like, not five days before. Yeah. And he turns around and he's like, you? You want to be a brewer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, hey, uh, yeah, I do. And so he's you know, asked me about what I know about beer. And back at that point, I mean, other than Carl Ockert, who was the brewer, head brewer brewmaster at uh, Bridgeport, even who had actually gone to college for winemaking and brewing, mm -hmm. I mean, no one else had any. I mean, we're all basically home brewers or mm -hmm. brewers that learn, you know, basically learn the job or... Like Widmer's, Kurt Widmer did this little stint in, in, um, over in Germany to learn how to make alt beer. So it was basically everybody's like, there was no experience, really. There's there's no experience. So at that point, you're not like trying to get a job with experience. You know, I don't have two years experience or whatever. But to make a long story short, I got hired and uh, called him on the phone. He said, yes, you're hired. Uh, show up. All you need to remember to bring is rubber boots. And I said, excellent. So at the end of my first day in work, he's, uh, okay, John, I want you to get your rubber boots and... Uh, climb into the kettle and scoop the hops out. And we had gloves and, and there's still wort in the kettle. So it's basically just below boiling. And I'm like, <laughs> rubber boots. <laughs> hiking boots. I have my hiking boots in the car. So I decided to go into the car and get my hiking boots. And um, one of the hiking boots was that they were split. You can't see my shoe away, but just the teal, the split oh, and, and the toe. Gross. I hop in. Sanitation's I kind of a big deal in brewing. <laughs> well, no, this is not sanitation. This is, I'm getting there to scoop out the hops. And the, the wort's gone. It's in oh, okay. Right now. But, but long story short is that there was a gap between the sole and my toe. And right. before I know it, that hot wort is now into my toe. I'm like, bring the water, bring the water, bring the water. He's like, what, what? Bring the water, I'm burning, I'm burning. <laughs> so I climb out. He looks at me, shakes his head and says, all right, you better have boots tomorrow or don't bother coming in. So <laughs> immediately went, the closest G.I. Joe's or whatever I could yeah, find. Yeah. Bought a pair of rubber boots and all the rest is <laughs> To be fair, you paid the price. Yes. You know, you well, paid you the sure price for not having them. So why do people call you the godfather of IPA? Can you explain that or debunk it? I've never actually heard that given to me before. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people say it to your face. <laughs> well, I mean... Tell us about when you... Tell us about the first IPA that you brewed. Okay, yeah, um... IPA was a kind of a newer style that we started seeing at Great American Beer Festival in about 1989 when I first went. And um, it was like a lost style that, I mean, no one really had heard of and, and made. Um, I think the probably the most original IPA in America probably is Liberty Ale by Anchor Brewing, mm -hmm. which is a dry hopped, um, really light, you know, like very pale. Um, it's not quite IPA strength, but I think it was the first one to incorporate the, the, the big dry hopping step. Yeah. And then... Uh, followed by probably Sierra Nevada Celebration Ale, which is more of a red IPA. You might, I don't want to say that because it might piss off Ken, but the point just is that you know, it's very, very reddish hued, but hopped like an IPA. So I think those two are kind of the predecessors to what has become IPA. But the first IPA that um, I made was with uh, Full Sail, and we, uh, we were asked to brew the commemoration beer, called uh, Symposium Beer, for the uh, Craft Brewers Conference, which was being held in 1993, if I remember right. And so we started cooking around the ideas uh, 
at the brewery, and, and uh, we all came up together as a group, kind of like, let's make this, it's the IPA's new, um, let's make one. I was running the Portland Brewery for Full Sail, so I was we making lots of draft of this beer, and it kind of was one of the first IPAs on the market. And then later on at Full Sail, when I was doing their Brewmaster Reserve program, which was basically a program where I would basically come up with the program, then brew the beers, and then go out and t talk about it with distributors, go see retailers and stuff. And in that s series, I started making lots of different styles of IPA uh, in the summertime. It was like I called the Sunspot series. So we had Sunspot, Sun of Spot. We had the Grand Sun of Spot. We had, and then to top it all off, we had Prodigal Sun, which the state of Utah did not like. And then we had the vast one I made was called Spotless. And that was into that series, but it was kind of a take on a certain style of IPA with these newer hops that were becoming available. So perhaps that's why I mean I was playing with IPAs pretty early on, and this would, this would have been like in the um, like I said, probably in the nineties, you know, right. mid nineties, late nineties. When you started your own brewery, did you have any wish to recreate some of these classic beers that you've been known for? No, not at all. <laughs> why? Because <laughs> I already did it. Yeah. If I'm already known yeah. for that, I mean, what? What have you learned? I mean, I, at this point, it's 31 years. When I opened the brewery, it was like 29 years or 28 years, whatever it was. But yeah. I mean, you're kind of like, what do you, you've, I've done that already. You know, right. it's just like, I mean, don't you have another idea with that, to go off that on top of that? And that's just the way I think of it. Cause it's like, you know, like each, each piece is like, it's like a, I guess it's like a painting of sorts, you know, it's a different recipe. It's like a, a moment a snapshot in time of that artist and, a, and what they were thinking that day. And, you know, Monet never did the same painting twice. I mean, it kind of looks almost the same, but they always look slightly different, you know? So yeah. you can make up, an IPA and change it a little bit and throw a little different hop in there, or even if you love it so much, you still can try to make it better. But I've never, I've never copied a recipe directly over at this point, whether I work, whether I work with Beta Men's or Full Sail or Deschutes or, but every beer is influenced by every beer you ever made. So I've been influenced by lots of beers at this point. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is there something particular that is, uh, you know, on your mind right now when you're, when you're brewing? Are you doing anything particular or unique that, that you want to talk about? Um, well, I mean, I started the brewery because I wanted to um, continue the creativity, of, which is really kind of what's driven me this whole time for all these years, is that the ability to create and make beer. I always had these a lot of beers in my head, like especially the brewing with fruit back in the early days. I love brewing with fruit, you know, and, and uh, something that, that Deschutes didn't do and Full Sail didn't do, and now they're both doing it now, which is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. But um, but things change, you know, times yeah. change. And so um, part of me wanted to get back to brewing, you know, with this, you know, Brewing things I used to make, you know, uh, played with, and so I opened Ecliptic. It was, the whole idea was there is no, we, we are not any particular brewery. We're not a fruit brewery. We're not a sour brewery. We're not a Belgian brewery. We're not a IPA brewery, you know, or whatever you want to say it is. Just, I wanted it to be everything and try to brew with fruit, make different things, come up with different ideas, just kind of have fun with it, and also be, you know, but also be realistic about like what people want to drink these days. And, like, yeah, you know, if people want to be, you know, they want a style like Chromosphere, and you like making that style, well, make something that people want to drink because. These days, people people's tastes are changing so rapidly that I mean, at this point, if it's got fruit in it, it's selling. Tell me about the name Ecliptic. Where did it come from? Okay, so I was, uh, decided to, back in 2012 to go ahead and quit my job and go open a brewery. So um, you gotta have a name, right? So um, gotta have a good name. You hope, right? Of course, I picked the name Ecliptic, which everybody wants to say Eclipse or they want to say Epileptic or Ecleptic or whatever. But anyhow, Ecliptic is. Um, I'm an astronomy buff, uh, it's a hobby of mine, and, uh, and it's named after the ecliptic plane, which is the path um, all of the planets travel around the sun. So all the planets kind of are on, are on a level keel, as you could say, going around the sun, like one's not going like this, and one's not going like this, you know, so they kind of follow this ecliptic plane, and it kind of ties into uh, um, my astronomy hobby, but also the fact that um, I really wanted to have a restaurant doing lots of seasonal food, and um, I wanted to have lots of seasonal specialty beers, and that all kind of ties into our trip around uh, the sun on, planet, on Spaceship Earth, and uh, cruising the plane, and, and it's, now it's winter now, we want something hard and hearty and rich, and now it's summer, and we don't have anything to do with anything heavy. So, you know, <laughs> everyone's light beer, you know, right now, so. Uh, we are drinking something that you brewed especially for the eclipse that is coming up. Can, right, you, right. can you tell us a little bit about this beer? And, and yeah, so we know the chromosphere after the, the uh, corona. I mean, the chromosphere, that's kind of the haze you see around the sun during an eclipse is the chromosphere. So um, you really can't see it that often unless there's an eclipse. So the kind of name kind of ties into it. You know. And being uh, a fan, I wanted to make this. Being the astronomy space brewery, I wanted to make a special beer for the Event. So I thought about what kind of style to make. You always think it's an eclipse or something dark. And of course, you're like, it's August 21st. Yeah. Who the hell wants to drink a dark yeah. Yeah. beer? So that, let's make the beer the color of the sun. So let's just do a blonde ale and uh, yeah. really light, easy drinking, some light like honey notes to it. And then just a nice hop flavor and, 
and Christmas, but not you know not super bitter or anything. So it's really plus I wanted to be a beer that anybody could enjoy on that day because a lot of people don't like IPAs, for instance, and so or sours, and so why why pigeonhole yourself into you know in the more you know heavy beer style. So. Yeah. John, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It has been an absolute honor and privilege to drink with the godfather of craft brewing <laughs> for the Pacific Northwest. Thank you for paving the all way right. for so many of us right. and sharing all your stories with us today. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been awesome. <laughs>